everyone, Pushing Up Roses here, and I am brimming with excitement. Today I'm talking about Return to Monkey Island, the new Monkey Island game created by Ron Gilbert, and I could not be happier. Unbeknownst to the gaming community, developer Ron Gilbert, founder of the company Terrible Toy Box, had secretly been working on a new Monkey Island game, so when word got out about it, there was a massive, enthusiastic response. What a lovely surprise, especially since so many years have passed since the last installment in the series. A little background for those who aren't familiar with it. The Monkey Island games were developed by LucasArts. There were four games in the original series, The Secret of Monkey Island, LeChuck's Revenge, The Curse of Monkey Island, and Escape from Monkey Island. Later on, a company called Telltale Games developed Tales of Monkey Island under license from LucasArts. It was released in 2009, nine years after Escape from Monkey Island, and since then, nothing. Tumbleweeds. Now in 2022, we have a new, completely unexpected Monkey Island game, and I am so thrilled. These adventure games are some of my absolute favorites. They're hilarious, beautiful, and charming. I have a very distinct, fond memory of stepping into a Babbage's when I was young and seeing the box art for The Curse of Monkey Island. I bought the game, played it, and it instantly became one of my favorite titles. It was swashbuckling fun, beautiful art, dialogue trees that I never wanted to skip quickly, and contributing to about 50% of the game's charm was Dominic Armato's exuberant performance as main character Guybrush Threepwood. Can I call you Bob? You may call me Murray! You know, you look great with a melting candle on your forehead. The games follow this character on his journey to be a mighty pirate. To progress on these journeys, you must complete a series of INVENTORY OBJECT PUZZLES! Man, I've missed saying that. And more importantly, you must squash your beef with zombie pirate LeChuck. If you've never played these games, then I highly recommend you do. If you have played these games, then you'll want to keep watching because I have some things to say in a very impassioned way. So when this game was announced, I noticed that some people had some very strong and frankly stupid opinions on the art style. So please hear me when I say Okay get bent. Okay, obviously, art is subjective, I don't think I need to say that, and as an artist I understand it, but some of the criticism really jumped the gun and honestly sounded bonkers. When you look at adventure games and how the genre has evolved over time, you'll notice huge changes even within a single series. Gabriel Knight went through three radically different style changes. King's Quest managed to look different every single time, and even the original four LucasArts versions of Monkey Island all look different. One and two are the most similar, but Curse of Monkey Island has a very 2D cartoony look, a departure from the first game, and 4 went 3D. So series like these typically don't have a dominant style, so I'm not upset that this game didn't adopt any of those previous styles. In fact, I can say with every fiber of my adventure game loving body that I love this art. I think it fits the tone of the game perfectly, more so than the previous 3D versions ever did. It's painterly, cutesy, and very animated. This is how I view Guybrush Threepwood as a character, with his long nose, coiffed blonde hair, and disproportionate body parts. The game is a classic point and click with, as mentioned before, inventory object puzzles. There's no way to die or get permanently stuck. Ron Gilbert has always been a loud proponent of fair puzzle design, and I think this game falls in line with his mission. These puzzles are actually way, way better than some I remember from the previous Monkey Island games. They're smarter and they just make more sense to me. Some are easy, some are not, but if you do get stuck and you're tired of wandering around or backtracking, there is a hint system and you can use it at any time. It starts you out with an easy hint, and you can keep getting more if one isn't enough. To give the player a short recap, the game starts with having them go through a scrapbook of Guybrush's previous adventures. It takes elements from all of the other titles, and even though it does a great job reminding me of what happened in those games, I don't personally think it's enough to fill in a brand new player. That's not to say you shouldn't play this one if you haven't played the others, I just get the impression that this will make a lot more sense to people who are familiar with the franchise. It's absolutely enjoyable on its own, you'll get a sense of who these characters are and what their histories are with each other over time, but I think you'll get the most out of this game if you've played the others. It even mentions the weird prosthetic abomination you can make in Escape from Monkey Island. I made a goofy monster out of prosthetic body parts. It didn't help with anything, but I had fun doing it. I named mine Jeff. He begs for death. I'm going to keep this as spoiler free as I possibly can, but I will need to touch on some of the storyline. It begins with an older Guybrush spinning a tale of glory and adventure to his young son. His son seems knowledgeable about his previous tales as a mighty pirate, aka the previous games. Now Guybrush is telling him the story of truly discovering the secret of Monkey Island. I admit I was a little nervous when I first started playing this. There were some changes to the UI, I wasn't sure where the story was going, and it looked so cute that I wondered if it wouldn't have that 
witty Monkey Island snark that I was jonesing for, but those anxieties were brief. When I saw my character standing there on Melee Island, it gave me this incredible dopamine rush. I was filled with nostalgia, happiness, this warm and fuzzy comfort I used to feel when I loaded up these games on my PC when I was a kid. The music is similar to the music in Curse, meaning it's perfect. Pretty sure I clocked a lovely instrumental rendition of a pirate I was meant to be at some point, and it made me very, very happy. Atmosphere? 10 out of 10. Love it. The voice acting is great. Dominic Armato is the perfect Guybrush. Hi, I'm Guybrush Threepwood. Remember me? Alexandra Boyd is back as Elaine Marley. How's your scurvy prevention project? It's great! We're going to get a lot of limes to a lot of sailors and save a lot of lives. Lilani Jones as the voodoo lady. Welcome, Guybrush Threepwood. And Murray, the demonic talking skull, is back in all his glory, voiced by Danny Delk. <laughs> Murray? Indeed, I am Murray, the all-powerful demonic skull. There's several new voices to the cast as well. Jess Harnell as LeChuck and Gavin Hammond as Stan stood out to me the most. They did a fantastic job capturing the characters of these characters. As you are playing Guybrush, he is the character you will hear the most from. His observations, thoughts, and reflections on his past escapades. How do you plead? Guilty of being a mighty pirate. I could honestly listen to Dominic as Guybrush forever. His voice acting really made this already funny character come to life. Another thought I had going into this was I was afraid it might just come across as a remake of the first game, considering it reuses locations and characters, but it doesn't read like a remake at all. It's a unique title in this series with enough new elements to keep it fresh and a lot of familiar things that make it a Monkey Island game. The writing is what really makes these games come to life and give them their distinct identity. The dialogue is very funny, as are the descriptions of inventory, things on the screen, and locations you visit. Why don't you take off the Ask Me About Loom button? My grog-riddled body is fused with it. I'm more button than man at this point. The dialogue trees in LucasArts games always stood out to me. I never feel the need to go through them quickly. The characters speak naturally and only repeat if you exhaust the options. It's hard to explain what I even mean by speaking naturally, but I guess if I compared the way these characters speak to NPCs in other games, even across other genres like RPGs, these sound more like they're having a flowing conversation. They aren't just throwing out one-liners or unhelpful information. I also love dialogue trees that offer some variety and replayability. That's what gives the writing the opportunity for humor. I laughed out loud several times. Oh no! <laughs> oh no, what have I done? I've ruined it. <laughs> No, consider the stump. I am certainly a fan of sillier, more wholesome jokes, and this game is full of them. Another thing I really appreciate about this game is that Ron is still incorporating things from the Monkey Island games he didn't work on into this one. Ron Gilbert did not work on The Curse of Monkey Island or Escape from Monkey Island, but you can see their inspiration all over this new title. Even though Curse and Escape maybe didn't fall exactly in line with Gilbert's vision for the series, it's nice that he appreciates and includes things from them that have become so unmistakingly Monkey Island. Marie the Talking Skull is a fan favorite that was introduced in Curse, and I couldn't imagine this lore without him. There are even nods to Escape, which is not as well loved by the community as the others, though I will go ahead and say that I love that game unabashedly and thought it was one of the few attractive looking 3D games that came out at the time. I think this game resembles Curse of Monkey Island the most, and that might be because it shares some similarities with the cartoony aesthetic, the voice acting, and the linear structure. They also both have different puzzle modes, so if you're not confident with your puzzle solving skills, there is a casual option. If you've played the other games, I recommend diving headfirst into hard mode. There are also save slots, which I appreciate. An adventure game without save slots is like an arrow without an arrowhead. Pointless. The story is separated into parts, and each part has its own set of puzzles you complete to progress it. Again, I don't want to give too many spoilers, but I'll give you the gist of what's going on here. In classic Monkey Island fashion, Guybrush is pitted against his mortal enemy, zombie pirate LeChuck, who is jilted by the so-called love of his life, Elaine Marley. Elaine chose Guybrush primarily because he's still alive, and now LeChuck has it out for him. You are in a race against him to finally find the secret of Monkey Island. However, there are also some new enemies to be aware 
care of. Captain Madison and her crew also want whatever Muggy Island has to hold, adding more obstacles to your journey. Meanwhile, Elaine Marley, former governor of Melee Island, is now an activist trying to help pirates fight scurvy. I love her lime grove, it's wonderful. I will say, I find there's a notable difference between this Elaine and previous iterations. She seems more mellow in this title, but I do like it. As much as I love a feisty female character, I also like a nice one who supports her husband. I feel better just talking to you. Me too. What I just said is a very simple description of the plot, but it goes much deeper than that. It's funny and creative, but it has an endearing quality as well. It discusses how we tell stories, how we interpret the endings of those stories, and what they mean to us. It's a little fourth wall breaking in that way, but not distractingly so. Those philosophical moments are woven nicely into the plot and into Guybrush's narration. I can tell this game was written with great care and intention, and meant just as much to the creators as it does to the fans of the series. I've not always been a fan of how the monkey Island games have ended, but this was the exception. I was extremely satisfied, wistful, and happy. I like this game. I recommend this game. I want more games. Those are my opinions. Playing through this has brought me a lot of desperately needed joy. Game developers have no obligation to me, my mood, or whatever is going on in my life, but this title that already meant so much to me came out right when I needed it. I am back in recovery from my eating disorder, and my priorities have been therapy, support groups, reading, and my job, and there wasn't much time for video so I games. Melee, I was getting extremely burnt started, out, and, and when I booted this game up, it swept my anxieties and stress away for a little while. So thanks to everyone at Terrible Toy Box for their impeccable timing. I don't have a lot of criticisms of this game. The only thing I can say is that not everyone will like the art style. Some people might get tired of the backtracking, and there were a few really minor UI issues I clocked, but other than that, I just really like this game. This is one of those rare times where my expectations were really exceeded. I didn't expect a bad game, but I also didn't expect such a good one. So go play it. You'll like it. And if you feel extra ambitious, maybe play the other games first. Get your adventure gaming on. Thanks for listening to me speak very passionately about Monkey Island. And until next time, you fight like a cow. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my review on Return to Monkey Island. I hope you're as pleased with the game as I am. If you want to see more content from me, this channel is filled with it. But first I want to say thank you to my lovely and generous patrons, for if not for them, I wouldn't be able to buy coffee and stay caffeinated enough to write these videos. If you want to support the channel and enable my blatant caffeine addiction, consider joining my campaign, and if not, comments, likes, and shares really help. I'll be more tired, but they help. If you want to see more content from me, I have a few suggestions on the screen. On the right is a video from my flagship series, That Time on Murder, She Wrote. And if you want to see another video game review from me, last year I reviewed a wonderful adventure game called The Dark Side Detective. Thanks again, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.